Hey guys, in this video I'm going to do another time series topic and it's going to be on determining the stationarity, causality, and invertibility of any ARMA-PQ stochastic process. So an ARMA-PQ is a stochastic process that has an autoregressive and a moving average part. So the P corresponds to the autoregressive part and the Q corresponds to the moving average part. And there's an easy way or a straightforward way of determining for any general ARMA-PQ for any P and any Q, whether these stochastic processes are stationary, causal, or invertible based on the formula. So we're going to be given a stochastic process and depending on how it's written, we're going to write it in this general form where we have phi or phi, however you pronounce it, B times the stochastic process XT is equal to theta B Z T, where Z T is going to be white noise with mean mu and variance sigma squared. And the B in this formula refers to what's called the backshift operator. And the backshift operator works as follows. So you have B to any integer J times XT, and that's going to be equal to XT minus a certain lag J. So for example, if you have just B to the one times XT, that's equal to XT minus one. And you can also apply the backward shift operator to a white noise ZT. So it's going to be the same thing, B to the J, where J is any integer times ZT is going to be equal to ZT minus J. And once we write our ARMA PQ process in that general form, what we're going to do is plug in Z for the backward shift operator. So we're going to have phi Z times XT is equal to theta z times zt, where z, the z in these two functions, is going to be any complex number. It can be a complex number or a real number, so it's going to be x plus yi. And the way we determine stationarity, causality, and invertibility will be based on how we solve for, so basically this will give you a characteristic polynomial for phi z and theta z, and then we solve for z, and depending on the solutions of the roots of z, that will tell us whether we have an invertible, causal, or stationary process. So the rules for determining these three properties is for stationarity, the phi z roots are not on the unit circle, and I'll go into more detail what that means in a second. For causality, the phi roots are outside the unit circle, and for invertibility, the theta roots are outside the unit circle. And as far as what we mean by the unit circle, that's going to be any value that has a length of radius one. So if we imagine that this is the x-axis and this is one, negative one, and this is a y-axis with value one, negative one, and if we draw a circle where every value, pretend that's a circle, where every value has a radius of one, that's a unit circle. And so we just have to check that for stationarity, the values do not equal one or are not on the unit circle. For causality, the the values are outside the unit circle, so greater than 1 or greater than these radii. And for invertibility, it's the same thing, but checking the roots for theta instead of phi. And so if you have a real number, you just have to check that that number is greater than 1 or less than negative 1. But if you have a complex number, and I'll show you an example of a value that is a complex number, we're going to check the values in between the major axes. Okay, so I have two examples, and the first example is a simple, straightforward example, and the second one is a little bit more involved. So let me start with example one. So this is just an AR model. So this is an AR1, which is equivalent to writing that as a ARMA10. So Q is equal to zero in this case. And the stochastic process is XT is equal to 0 0.9 XT minus one plus ZT. So the first thing we wanna do is we, we want to write the stochastic process in this general format. So we want it to be phi backward shift operator. So a function of phi times XZ is equal to a function of theta times ZT. 
So we're going to move the X T's to the left hand side and keep the Z T's on the right hand side. So that's going to be X T minus 0.9 X T minus 1 is equal to Z T. And then we want to write X T times a function of the backward shift operators. So you don't need a backward shift operator for X T. So that's just going to be 1 minus 0.9 B times X T. If we distributed this, this would be X T minus 0.9. 0.9 b times x t and that would give you this line here and then this is just z t we don't have to make any changes to the right hand side and now the next step is we're going to plug in z for the backward shift operators so we're going to write out our characteristic functions for phi and theta so phi z would be equal to 1 minus 0.9 z and theta z is just going to be equal to 1 and now for the next step, we have to check the stationarity, causality, and invertibility based on determining the roots of z. So first, we can check for invertibility, and the rule for that is that the theta roots are outside the unit circle. But here, we don't even have any roots to check because theta z is just equal to 1, and there's no z. So right away, we know that this stochastic process is invertible. This is a check mark, by the way. I'm left-handed, so it looks weird. So this was easy. We're done with that first part. And then we have to solve for z, find the roots of z, to check for stationarity and causality using phi. So we're going to set this equal to 0 to find the roots. So that's going to be 1 minus 0.9 z is equal to 0. So that's going to be 1 is equal to 0.9 z. And z is going to be 1 divided by 0.9. 1 divided by 0.9 is going to be greater than 1 and it's also not equal to 1. So since it's greater than 1, we have causality. And since it's not equal to 1, we also have stationarity. So we've effectively proved that this stochastic process, this AR1 model, is invertible, causal, and stationary based on these properties. So that was a simple example because it was just an AR1 model, which is pretty simple. So now let me go to the second example, which is a little bit more involved. So for example two, we have an ARMA 2-1 model and it is the following, xt minus 0.75, xt minus 1 plus 0.5625, xt minus 2 is equal to zt plus 1.25, zt minus 1. So again, the same thing as before, the first thing we want to do is get this in terms of the backward shift operator, a function of backward shift operators times xt on the left hand side, and a function of backward shift operators times zt on the right hand side. So that's going to be equal to 1 minus 0.75b plus 0.5625b squared times zt, and that's the left hand side, and the right hand side is going to be 1 plus 1.25b times zt. Now that we're done with that step, the next step is to get the phi z characteristic polynomial and the theta z characteristic polynomials. So that's going to be 1 minus 0.75z plus 0.625z squared for phi z. And for theta z, that's going to be 1 plus 1.25z. The first thing I did was I checked the theta z roots, since that's a little bit simpler than checking the phi z roots. So I'm first going to check for invertibility. So that's going to be 1 plus 1.25 z is equal to 0, and we're solving for z. That's going to be 1.25 z is equal to minus 1, and then z is going to be equal to negative 0.8 if we divide negative 1 by 1.25. So we have z is equal to negative 0.8, which is greater than negative 1. So if we think about the unit circle again, this point is going to be within the unit circle because it's greater than negative 1. So this is not invertible. Next, I'm going to check the phi z roots for stationarity and causality. So to do that, I have to solve for z here, and this is just a quadratic equation. So we have 0.625z squared minus 0.75z plus 1 is equal to 0. I'm going to solve for that using the general quadratic formula. So that's going to be 0.75 plus or minus the square root of 0.5625 minus 4 times 1 times 0.625. And that's all over 
2 times 0 0.625. If you do the math on this, this is going to give you 2 thirds plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3i divided by 3. So as you can see, when you do the quadratic formula and you simplify, this is a complex number because it has a real part and an imaginary part. So this is going to be not on the major axes, it's going to be somewhere in between. So we have to determine the length of this z. We basically have to find the length or the radius to determine whether it's greater than the unit circle or within the unit circle. So to do that, we're going to find the length of z, or you can think of this as the L2 norm, and the formula for that is just the distance equation, so it's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared, so you can think of this as x and this part as y. So if we do that, that's going to be equal to the square root of 2 thirds squared plus 2 times square root of 3 divided by 3 squared. And if you do that math, that's going to be 4 thirds. So because 4 thirds is not equal to 1, we have stationarity. And because 4 thirds is greater than 1, it's outside the unit circle, and we again have causality. And so for this stochastic process, we have that this arma 2, 1 is not invertible, it's stationary, and it's causal. And we're done with this problem.